Hey guys, James Quick here to talk to you about the basics of Git. So first off on the screen right now, you can see my contact information, my Twitter handle and Microsoft email, my meetup. So if you're local to the South Florida area, you can come check us out in person. The My blog is, it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's quick underscore thoughts. And then my YouTube channel where you're watching right now is uh, a bitly link and it's JQ YouTube. So here to talk about the basics of Git, and if you're a programmer, if you don't know what Git is, you've probably at least heard of it. I heard of it for a long time before I actually really learned what it is and why I should and you should be using it. So basically, Git is a tool for version control, and I, I guess it's worth kind of talking about what version control is. So let's say you're working on a project, and you, you create the project, you work on it, you save it. So you save it once, you come back again, you make some changes, and you save it again. You open it up a third time, and you realize that the changes you made that second time messed something up. I don't know what something is, it could be anything, but it messed something up. So you need to figure out how to fix that something. So you start playing around, you're looking for where the error is, you undo all the stuff you did in part two, and it's kind of a hassle. What source control is, or version control, source control, it allows you to kind of uh, take a snapshot of each time you save. So if, if you're using Git, each time you commit, and we'll see what commit is in a minute, each time you commit changes to Git, um, you, will, you will be able to kind of go back to that snapshot if you want to. So instead of trying to fix part two, I can just go back to part one and kind of start start again right so I can I can save often and I can go back to any save or commit that I previously had if you guys have heard of github these are two separate two different but related things um, and this is uh, something I came across recently as well so I, I always kind of assume that git is short for github so git is version or source control that's local to your machine so it'll keep uh, local snapshots of your projects. GitHub is um, is online, so if you if you push to GitHub with the free version of GitHub, everything's going to be public first of all. And this this is a good way for like let's say if you pay for the the private version, this is a good way to do team collaboration on projects. So you can make changes, say what the changes are, someone else can come in, make additional changes, and each one of those uh, snapshots are captured. So the big difference is, is that Git is local, GitHub is, is not local. You need to have internet connection to be able to connect to GitHub. And GitHub is more or less built on top of Git, if that makes sense. So to get started, we need to, you need to go ahead and download Git. So it's it's up here. This link is git-scm.com slash download. And on this page, I'm using Windows, so I would go ahead and download for Windows. It's going to be pretty straightforward. You click download, you get an EXE, you run it. You will have one option or one thing that you'll kind of have to choose how you want to run it. And basically, it gave me the option to run it in the command prompt. So I'm just going to run this in the command prompt. Right, so instead of using um, instead of using something else, so to go ahead and get started, I'm going to go ahead and open up the command prompt. And after you install Git, you can just come into your command prompt and type Git. And if your install went correctly, you should see uh, the list of commonly used Git commands. So you should see this screen if you've installed correctly. Now I'm going to change in. Uh, so I'm going to change directory to my desktop and on my desktop I'm going to create a folder so mkdir make directory and I'm going to call it git test and let's see so I've got my I've got this up here my desktop in the file explorer so when I create the git test if I come over here and scroll down I should have a git test folder and notice that it's completely empty so again if I change uh, directory into the git test and do directory, there's nothing there. So what I want to do is I want to initialize this folder as a git folder. So anything in this folder, after I initialize it, will kind of be subject to version or source control. 
So to do that, I can do git init, and this will initialize this folder as a git folder. And notice that here in the file explorer, I now have a dot git folder inside of that git test. All right. So let me go in. I'm going to create uh, just a new, and I'll create a new text document here, and I'll call it test. So test dot text. And now if I want to see the status of this folder that I've got here, I can do inside of the folder, I can do get and then status. And when I do that, I see that I had an initial commit or commit. And then it says I have untracked files. So it says, um, it says I can use the get add and then a file name to include this file and what will be committed. And again, a commit here, is when we when we actually take or commit that snapshot of our project or our files so if I were to save or edit this file right now it would it would save locally but any of the any of the changes would not be committed to git if that makes sense and hopefully it does so I want to go ahead and since I have this test.txt I want to go ahead and add this file uh, to be committed so I can do git dot add or git add and then give it the test name or give it the name of the uh, test document press enter and now this file has been added to be committed so it's it's edit and then add and then commit and you kind of cycle through that so now if I do a git status I should see I have a I have changes to be committed and that new file is test.txt so it's ready to be committed and now if I want to actually commit it, I could just do git commit and then I need a dash m and a, a string to say something about this commit. So this will be my initial commit. And when I do that, it says one file change, zero insertion, zero deletion. So now if I do a git status again, I have nothing to commit because everything is already updated. Sorry about that. All right, so so now everything is committed. Now, if I come open, I come over and edit this, in Notepad plus plus or something, and say, hey, I am making a few changes. Save it. Now, if I come back over and do git status, I have that one file, the test.txt, that's been modified, and now I could git add test.txt to add it and then git commit with the dash m and then a string that says this is the second commit. So usually I would be a little more specific here, but for the simple example, this is all we need. So if I input this and now do a git status again, I can see that everything is up to date, nothing to commit, no changes have been made since my last commit. So those are the basics. Your basic commands are, uh, uh, after you install, you can do the git, just type git to test to make sure it installed correctly. You can do a git init to initialize a folder as a git folder. Then uh, you can create a text document, you can edit it, and your basic cycle will be to edit a document, to add it, and then commit it in. And once you do that commit, then you can go back and, and view those previous snapshots. So those are the basics of of git and actually there's one more command I want to show and that is the git k command so if I do git k and I give this a second it should pop up with another window and now in this git k I can see all of the different commits that I've made so this is my initial commit and on my initial commit there was nothing in my file down here in my second commit now I can see hey I'm making a few changes and remember this is the description the initial commit and this is the second commit these are the descriptions we gave when we um, when we actually committed so uh, again uh, this is a great way to go back and compare previous files and to see um, like, like I said if you miss something to see what you messed up and how to go back and fix it and how to recover back to a previous snapshot of your project so those, again, these are the basics of Git. And again, this is different, but related uh, to GitHub. GitHub is the basically an online repository, 
version of Git, and it's more or less kind of built on top of Git. And this allows for uh, like cross-team collaboration because it's online, so teammates can come in and and do projects and leverage source control. So if you if you develop any kind of software or apps, you probably want or need to be using some version of source control and Git tends to be the biggest thing and the most popular that I hear of. Uh, so that's that's the basics of Git and GitHub. So thanks for thanks for hanging out and listening. Hope you learned something.